Morning all, final test ride, Saturday morning, and we're out on this, a 8-ball black Michigan. Now you've seen loads of me riding these, go and check out the tech spec. So this is 8-ball, going out to one of our customers. So, runs on the side stand until you put it in gear. We've got a main stand on it as well, fuel indicator comes up here. Miles an hour on the inside, K's on the outside, gear indicator across the bottom, neutral, one, two, three, four, five, five speed box, nice wide mirrors, just check out the view of the road behind there, absolutely perfect. So, decent set of mirrors on these as well. And into first gear, we are out on a Saturday morning test ride, and have a little bit of fun, get it in gear RB. So, down the dual carriageway we go, back down the other side and back to the garage for my obligatory Saturday morning a cup of coffee before it gets absolutely crazy. Through the box we go and with the Michigan to get up to speed pretty darn quick. So great little cruiser bike and instead of pegs you've got boards, running boards, foot boards foot plates, whatever you want to call them, they have boards down there, nice flat foot, feet out to the front, not all the way forward, I'd say semi-mid, down there, there we go, you can see them, nice high bars, perfect angle for the arms, and it does the job, now very easy to read the speedo on these, for a change, 30 is 11 o'clock, 40, 12 o'clock, 50, 1 o'clock, you can't go far wrong, and as always we check the braking out, so clutch in and come in hard on the brakes, and ooh, that stops really good, just click down the box, all the way to the bottom, nice and easy, so nice smooth gearbox on these, I love these Michigans, great little cruiser bike, and I am getting more and more into the cruiser style feet forward, because it sits your back up right, you don't end up with a bad back like you do if you're hunched over a sports bike or if you've got your feet slightly back on a road bike so it's great on the back this one, you can sit bolt upright and you can tuck yourself down if you want to get a little bit more speed out the bike, a bit more wind resistance but it does sit your bolt upright so you do get a face full of body full of air there's absolutely nothing in the front of the bike to protect you but sitting at 40, 45 like we normally do, down the dual carriageway, occupy in position 1, 2, make them go round. Now, if you're on the 50, position 1, right to the inside lane. <coughs> but, all good. And Uncle Bill's out on his daily patrol again, keeping an eye on the speeding people that come hammering down here. So, this is my last test ride of the week, the final one for me before I go on holiday. Hey, we are off to Wales tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, where I spend a, white, a week and down in nice sunny Wales, hopefully. We shall see what the weather's like. So if you do follow the channel and you follow my test rides, you know Friday night is live stream. If I get back to the live stream next Friday, all good. We didn't get in last night until very, very late. I think we went on the live stream about quarter past nine last night instead of eight o'clock. So thanks for everybody that joined me last night. It was very eventful. The Peaky Rev and Zed Head Show last night. Joined by Richard from GTR Hyphen Travels at UK. He was telling about his, uh, his ride and he's doing another one as well. So thanks Richard for coming in. Thanks to everybody that came in on the side chat. That was really good. And people say to me, yo, you're meant to be test riding the bike. Why do you waffle on about other stuff? Because people that follow the channel like to see my test rides. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and they also like to hear what I'm doing through the week. So it's been very, very busy at the garage. We have sold eight bikes yesterday. Yes, eight bikes went out and for sale yesterday, which means when I get back off holiday, I have a shed load of preps to do builds, ride tests, so watch out for them, there's going to be one, probably one or two a day coming up very, very shortly, but they've stacked it all for when I get back off holiday, thanks guys. So, if you're in, uh, if you're in Michigan, you'll know how good these things are, now, what I would suggest is that you go and have a look at a channel 
called MT Belly. Now Matt has had one of these for about the last two, three years after I suggested he get some Michigan. He went and had a look at it, he absolutely loves the Michigan. It's three years old and it looks like it's just fell out of the showroom because he keeps it clean and maintained. And as I say, with all bikes, get yourself some ACF50. It's an anti-corrosion formula. Now there's two ways to do it. If you want to ACF50 your bike. What I tend to do on new bikes is two microfiber cloths. Get your ACF 50 nice and warm, so if you've got a can, put it in some warm water, not boiling water. Warm it up, get it up to about 30, 40 degrees. Spray it on the bag so it comes out nice and sprayable. And then, when you've got the microfiber wet, wipe it all over the bike. Now you can put it on panels, all around your handlebars. You can use it on bolts, all the metal work. So literally coat the entire bike with the microfiber on everywhere. Once it's on there, get a damp cloth, a uh, dry cloth, the other microfiber and just buff it off. You'll get a liberal layer sit on the bike because it is oil based but it is also an anti-corrosion protector. Now, do not put it on your brakes, anywhere near the brakes, anywhere near the tyres. It is an oil based compound. If it gets in there you're not going to stop and you're also going to slip if you've got it near your tyres, so get it all over the bike. Now, the other way to do it, and I bought a shed load of it recently, is to buy it in bottles, in liquid form. So what I tend to do is get a plant spray bottle. Just the 99p one from b and or whatever, 99p spray bottle. Set it to mist. One thing again, you warm your ACF 50 up, I tend to put it in hot water, get it nice and hot, pour it in my plant spray bottle so it's nice and runny, and spray it all over the bike. And then, the same thing again, dry microfiber, and buff off. That is the way to do it. Because that's how to ACF 50 your bike, there's loads of videos on YouTube on how to ACF 50 your bike, go and look at some of those. <coughs> I haven't done one because it is pointless because there's so many ACF videos out there. Or go and check out Exeter Rider. He's done a very, very good one. He uses, uh, I think, a little mini spray gun to do his. Quick shoulder check. And we're back on the dual carriageway. The seal tails on this Michigan very, very easy to see. Everything's all down on that uh, little dial there. And it's very easy. It's not down on the tank like on the UM, but someone commented on the UM and said, oh, why don't they put it on the handlebar? It's just, all you've got to do is just look down for a split second. You can't see If you know how to drive a bike, you'll know it's very, very easy to look at your blocks. And the same with the Harleys. Harleys are down there as well. On the Michigan, it's dead in front of me. So nice and easy to read the speedo, see all your telltales and uh, get out on the road. <coughs> But the gearbox on this is lovely and smooth, as is with all Michigans. And they are a great bike for the money, probably one of the best ones that Lex Moto do. Now there are some good bikes from Lex Moto, and there are mm, some that are, people say, not so good. The ones I would recommend are the Titan scooters, cheap as chips, and they are bomb proof. And we've proved that no end of times. We've also got the ZSB, that is another cheap one as well. Bare bones, basic bike, well reliable engine on that one. It's been used in so many bikes. But the ZSB, another good bike, good for the money. Also the uh, Michigans, they're very, very good. Great little bike. And the LXRs and the LXSs, now they've sort out the, sorted out the ignition problems. So if everybody remembers the first generation of LXRs prone with ignition barrel problems, they sort it out with the Gen 2 locks. Works a lot better. And we sell a lot of LXRs and LXSs, especially the SEs. Now the SE Carbon is an absolute humdinger of a bike. It is gorgeous. Would I recommend one of them? Yes. And then of course you get your people that knock the Chinese bikes. All bikes these days are coming out of China, even your main big brand bikes. Some of the parts are coming out of China, everything's made in China these days. But, the reliability 
of a bike is down to how you look after it, nice and steady, like I do on all my test rides, and run the bike in. If you're going to open it up, pin the throttle, rag the absolute crap out of the bike, you aren't going to have that bike last. And then the year down the line, all oh, my bikes play that. Uh, it's because you haven't maintained it. Service regularly. Now, I would suggest getting your bike into a dealer. For, he's a bit quick. For 1950 is what we charge. Most dealers charge between about 80 and about 120 quid. We charge 10950, which is right bang in the middle. Uh, and the same on every service we do is oil and filter change. Check the coolant if it's a liquid cooled bike. Bolt check all the way through the bike. Check the brakes. Check the uh, steering. Check the lights. Check the fuel system. Check the tyre pressures. <coughs> Grease, adjust and lubricate the chain if required. So it's quite a big service we do, but we do that on absolutely every bike, including the 50s and the 125s. Now, if it is a belt drive bike, then also you get the final drive oil checked as well. And if needed, checked, changed or topped up. Just depends on how dirty that oil is in the final drive. But we do all of that <coughs> on a service. I've got a right frog in my throat this morning as well. So that's what we do on a service, but you should be getting your bike into a main dealer. If you are going to service yourself and you know what you're doing, then do it. But obviously remember, own servicing will invalidate the warranty, as will getting matey boy round the corner that reckons he is a motorcycle mechanic in his van, come down and go, oh, I can service your bike and I can do it for 60 quid. Yes. As we found out a couple of weeks ago when uh, a guy bought a Titan in, would not run and where did you get it serviced oh the uh, the local uh, motorcycle mechanic round the corner yeah, working out of his garage probably and when you take the dipstick out and you realize that the oil level is filled right to the top of the dipstick and as the dipstick comes out the oil runs out now titan should have around about 900 mil of oil in those this had two liters so massive amount of oil in the engine and on the verge of over pressure in it and pop in the engine so make sure when you are servicing you check the spec and you make sure you do all your bolt checks and make sure you get it right so hill climb here we go my favorite little bit of hill running nine hill up to the top of brick hill to rb's home <coughs> And this is a great bit of hill for where the bikers open it up coming up here. <laughs> yes, we do hammer up this hill at uh, a little bit more than the speed limit, 72 mile an hour we do up here. <laughs> uh, but it's a great hill for uh, obviously opening it up and testing your bike. So, doing the throttle 42 and it's still holding this Michigan climbs like an absolute hoodlum. Doesn't lose much power climbing a hill and it's a great bike, I absolutely love these. Let's sit out a little bit more because I've got nothing behind me. So if you're thinking of getting yourself a Michigan, yes, I would recommend one of these, love them, and uh, Matt's MC Belly will uh, back me up on this. If you look after them, they are a great bike and run for absolutely ever. <coughs> So we are plenty of miles in, this is good, very easy to swap the speedo over, there's a little button on the back of the speedo, push and hold and it changes it from miles to kilometres and kilometres to miles. So very easy to change that over as well. Indicators on these are LEDs, headlight is bulbed, but every, all the bulbs and that uh, Headlights, stoplights, everything is really, really bright on these, which is really good. Right, we're going to go over the top, down the other side, and then back to the garage for the obligatory cup of coffee. Right, we're going to come in this time, we're going to use the rear brake. Combined braking on this. So what that means is the front brake will give you the front disc only. The rear brake will give you a 
70% to about 30% rear and front at the same time. So we always say, up in the handlebars for a dry day, down on the foot for a wet day. And so you've got to remember, dry day, wet day. And you may notice that uh, I tend to hold the front brake or the rear brake going into corners. Yes, I tend to... Bad track habit. Bad track habit, RB. It's called trail braking. Just scrub a little bit of speed off, but as long as you don't grab too much of a handful, you're all right. And keep it to dry days only. Don't go grabbing front brake on a wet day. Or we'll stay off the brakes in corners. But I do tend to trail brake a lot. Right, we're going to move out, check the mirror, quick shoulder check. We are out onto the dual carriageway down the other side. Now steady, 42 mile an hour. And back to the garage for my cup of coffee, which has probably gone cold on my now. Don't have to make myself another one. Nice and steady, no more than 45. So, servicing requirements, everybody asks about servicing requirements, 500 miles, 3 months, fair service, maximum speed of 40 to 45. Get your first service out of the way, because you've got running oil in these. Right. Once you've had your first service, get it back in, get that done. When the oil's been changed and you're all good to go, you can then do 50 to 55. That will take you 3,000 miles or six months, whatever comes quicker. So mileage or time. So three months, first service, 500. Your next one, 3,000, six months after the first service. Once you've done that, is another 3,000 miles one year, and then 3,000 miles a year and a half, 3,000 miles two years. It gets extends by six months every time you do a service. So just length this out. So 3, 6, 12, 18, 24. <coughs> nice little blue car. It is very cold this morning, very cold and bitey. Where's the sunshine when you need it? It's a bit nippy on the old chest as well. Oof. Should have changed up and put my other jacket on. That is the only thing, obviously, with the Michigan. You get a lot of wind across the body, so a nice warm bike jacket does help. Oh, lo and behold, look, taxi drivers over the line. And uh, it happened to be a Prius as well, yeah. Through the box we go, four into five, nice and steady, get through the box as quick as you can. And we're going to head back. Right, so if you enjoyed the video, if you've got a Michigan, let us know in the comments below, let me know what you think of the Michigans. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe, click the thumbs up and all that. Don't forget to follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and of course the YouTube channel. Keep an eye out for the Friday Night Lives. Get a little bit raucous at times. Watch out for more test rides. I will probably put some footage up of uh, being away on holiday on my YouTube. Keep a couple of quick shorts up there just to uh, show you what it's like. Because we are off to a place called Folly Farm in Kilgetty, which is Wales, just up from Tembe. <coughs> and... Our lodge is right on the edge of a zoo, so we get free admission to the zoo every day. Plus we get uh, my obligatory hot tub, like I always do. <laughs> lodge winner hot tub, that's going to be fun. And I get to chill out for a week and uh, not even look or touch a bike. Mind you, I've been told there's a nice bike cafe down that way, so I might pop in the car and have a quick butchers like you do when you're into bikes. But thanks everybody for following, enjoy the video, enjoy the weekend, and as always, from RB, be well, ride safe, and it's a big goodbye from me.